Winnie Ruth McKinnell was born on January 29, 1905, in Oxford, Indiana, to Reverend H.J. McKinnell, a Methodist minister, and his wife, Carrie. She married Dr. William C. Judd, a World War I veteran, over 20 years her senior, at the age of 17, and moved with him to Mexico. William, grappling with a morphine addiction due to war injuries, struggled to maintain employment, leading to frequent relocations and financial instability for the couple. Additionally, Winnie Ruth's health issues and infertility further strained their marriage. By 1930, the couple had mostly drifted apart, though they maintained regular contact. Ruth Judd relocated to Phoenix, Arizona, where she worked as a governess for a wealthy family. It was in Phoenix that she crossed paths with John J. Holleran, a 44-year-old local businessman known for his involvement in the city's social and political scene. Despite being married, Holleran had a reputation as a womanizer. Ruth and Holleran developed a close relationship, eventually engaging in an extramarital affair. Shortly after, Ruth secured a position as a secretary at the Gruno Medical Clinic in Phoenix. It was there that she befriended Agnes Ann Leroy, an X-ray technician, and her roommate, Hedvig Samuelson, who had moved to Phoenix from Alaska after Samuelson fell ill with tuberculosis. Both Leroy and Samuelson were acquainted with Hollerin. Ruth grew close with the two women, even residing with them for a brief period in 1931. However, disagreements arose, prompting Ruth to return to her own apartment, which was situated near the bungalow shared by Leroy and Samuelson. At the time of the tragic events, Ruth was 26 years old, Leroy was 27, and Samuelson was 24. According to police reports, on the night of October 16, 1931, Leroy and Samuelson were tragically murdered, allegedly by Judd following a heated altercation among the three women regarding Holleran's attention. During Judd's subsequent murder trial, the prosecution contended that disputes over romantic interests and tension within the trio's relationship, particularly between Leroy and Samuelson, led to the deterioration of their friendship, and jealousy purportedly served as the motive behind the killings. The victims met their demise inside their bungalow, where they were shot with a .25 caliber handgun. Prosecutors further allege that Judd, along with an accomplice, dismembered Samuelson's remains, placing her head, torso, and lower legs into a black shipping trunk, while the upper legs were stowed in a beige hat box. Leroy's body was reportedly left intact and placed in a separate black shipping trunk. Two days after the murders, on Sunday, October 18, 1931, Judd, her left hand bandaged from a gunshot wound, boarded the overnight Golden State Limited passenger train from Phoenix Union Station to Los Angeles, California, accompanied by the trunks and luggage containing the victims' bodies. During the journey to Los Angeles Central Station, a baggage handler named H.J. Mapes grew suspicious of Judd's trunks due to their foul odor and leaking fluids. Mapes raised his concerns to the district baggage agent in Los Angeles, Arthur V. Anderson, suggesting that the trunks might contain illegally transported deer meat, a common occurrence on trains heading to the West Coast at the time. Anderson decided to tag the trunks for inspection, but when asked, Judd claimed she did not have the key. Upon arrival, Judd's brother, Burton McKinnell, a student at the University of Southern California, picked her up from the station, unaware of the murders or the contents of the trunks. Judd left her trunks behind. Later that afternoon, around 4.30 p.m., Anderson contacted Los Angeles Police Department to report the suspicious trunks. The police opened the trunks and discovered the bodies. Meanwhile, Judd's brother had dropped her off somewhere in Los Angeles, where she vanished. She remained in hiding for several days until she turned herself into the police at a funeral home the following Friday, October 23, 1931. The sensational murder case captured national attention, with the media dubbing Judd the Tiger Woman and the Blonde Butcher. It became known as the Trunk Murders in the press, with Judd earning the moniker of the Trunk Murderess. On the evening of Monday, October 19, 1931, Phoenix police officers entered the bungalow where Leroy and Samuelson had lived. Unfortunately, the crime scene's integrity was compromised, as neighbors and reporters were granted access. 
The following day, the landlord of the bungalow placed advertisements in the Arizona Republic and the Phoenix Evening Gazette offering tours of the three-room residence for 10 cents per person. This publicity stunt attracted hundreds of curious onlookers. During the trial, Judd's defense team objected, arguing that the extensive public exposure had tainted the crime scene. They contended, by the advertisements in the newspapers, the entire population of Maricopa County visited that place. The police asserted that the victims had been shot while asleep in their beds. Notably, the mattresses from both beds were missing when the police arrived. One of the mattresses was later discovered miles away in a vacant lot, devoid of any blood stains. Judd's trial commenced on January 19, 1932, at the Maricopa County Courthouse, under the jurisdiction of Judge Howard C. Speakman. Remarkably, the aspects of the double homicide involving dismemberment was not addressed during the court proceedings. Judd faced trial solely for the murder of Leroy, as Samuelson's body had not been dismembered, and she was never formally charged with Samuelson's death. The prosecution argued that Judd had acted with premeditation citing the deteriorating relationships among the women over several weeks and disputes regarding Halloran's affection as motives for the murder. They also contended that Judd self-inflicted a gunshot wound to her left hand to fabricate a claim of self-defense. However, Judd's defense maintained her innocence, asserting her insanity, although they refrained from introducing the self-defense argument on record. Judd opted not to testify in her own defense. On February 8th, the jury found Judd guilty of first-degree murder in the case of Leroy. Despite an unsuccessful appeal, Judge Speakman sentenced Judd to hang on February 17, 1933, and she was transferred to Arizona State Prison in Florence. However, it later came to light that four jurors had submitted sworn affidavits claiming they recommended the death penalty under pressure from former Mesa Mayor Dan Kleinman to convince them that it was the best way to compel Judd to disclose any accomplices in the murder. They implored Speakman to commute the sentence to life imprisonment. Subsequent investigations by Judd's attorneys uncovered evidence suggesting that Kleinman had predetermined his vote to convict Judd and send her to the gallows had he been part of the jury. Despite lodging two appeals based on juror misconduct, both were unsuccessful. Ultimately, Judd's death sentence was overturned following a 10-day hearing that deemed her mentally incompetent. Following the overturning of her death sentence, Judd was institutionalized at the Arizona State Asylum for the Insane, later renamed the Arizona State Hospital, located in Phoenix, the sole mental institution in the state. Between 1933 and 1963, Judd managed to escape from the institution six times, with one instance involving her journeying all the way to Yuma traversing the old Southern Pacific Railroad tracks. Her final escape occurred on October 8, 1963, facilitated by a key to the hospital's front door provided by a friend. Judd found herself in the San Francisco Bay Area, where she assumed the identity of Marion Kane and worked as a live-in maid for an affluent family residing in a Bayview mansion. After six years, her true identity was discovered, leading to her extradition back to Arizona on August 18, 1969. In her legal battles, Judd enlisted the service of renowned San Francisco defense attorney Melvin Belly, who in turn retained Larry Debus to handle her case. Governor Jack Williams of Arizona agreed to sign Judd's release under the conditions of maintaining secrecy. However, Belly's decision to hold a press conference calling for Judd's immediate release led to Debus dismissing him. Judd was eventually paroled and released on December 22, 1971, following two years of legal battles. She returned to California to resume her employment with the family she had previously worked for. Later, she relocated to Stockton, California, before eventually returning to Phoenix for a few years before her passing. She died on October 23, 1998, at the age of 93, exactly 67 years from the day she surrendered to the LAPD in 1931. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to join our community. We upload every Monday and Thursday at 4 p.m. For more content like this, be sure to check out our other videos on the channel. You can also follow us on our other social media platforms for uploads and updates. 
Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.